Hi there. Um, you know who this is. This is Cassidy. How are you doing? And today I decided to do a video. I'm going to go over a, uh, another question from a reader. And this was posted on Facebook. And I decided that rather than try to write all of this out, I'd actually um, record it in a video. And this is what you're seeing. So this comes from Joanne Brunetti, who is a member of our hodgepodge crochet group, of which I'm a member in good standing. I'm a groupie. <laughs> and uh, quite proud of it. I won't say I'm a founding member, but I'm in the top five, I believe, of people in the door. Uh, I like that. But anyway, her question, and one of the reasons why I'm not writing it out, is because it's a specific question. It doesn't have to do with writing, but more my personal life. And her question is, was there a specific event that led to you, that led to you making the decision to go ahead and live your true life? <laughs> That's a good question. And there actually is an answer to that. But first, a little background in how I got to that point. And it took a while. I mean, I've talked about this before. I was in my 50s before I started the process of transitioning. And there really was kind of a front end to that. Um, in 2008, I was laid off from a job that I had been at for 13 years. And I was out of work for a little over three years. And it wasn't a very good time for me. Um, in late 2010, probably around August of 2010, uh, by that time I was no longer in therapy. I was starting therapy, but not gender therapy at that time. It was a completely different therapy. And I was no longer taking uh, medication for depression. So mentally and emotionally, I had pretty much shut down. I had been searching for work for two years straight and couldn't find anything. And uh, like I said, it wasn't a good time in my life. Um, the depression that I had, it wasn't so much depression, but I was at a, a low level of just not caring anymore. And it had little to do with gender, I didn't even bring that up at that time. But around August or September of that year, I, I'd have to go back and check. Uh, I got involved in an online writing course because I just decided, hey, you know what? I think I'll take an online writing course because I have nothing else to do. And um, I had fun with it. And that was where I met my friend Tanya. And you've heard me talk about her before. Uh, few times. I've mentioned her off and on through the course of my blog. And we developed a friendship uh, after the writing course actually. Uh, we, didn't <laughs> we didn't converse much during it. In fact it was all online but afterwards we, we struck up uh, conversations and struck up a friendship and there's a <laughs> There's some interesting stories that go along with that, but I'm not going to bring them up now. Um, anyway, after the writing course was over going into uh, the end of 2010, the beginning of 2011, uh, both of us became pulled into some uh, online role playing, which eventually led to us uh, going in and striking out on our own and setting up our own role play. Um, and it was in that genesis of setting up 
a role play of our own that um, the first the first uh, nucleus you might say the first inklings of what is now known as the Salem School the Salem Institute of Greater Education and Learning on now K-Ban. It was actually somewhere else when uh, we put it together. But um, I laid out maps and laid out a lot of the school and uh, we both had a hand at developing um, some of the characters. A lot of the characters, all of the characters, <laughs> nearly all of them, and it, just about anyone that you've seen in the book, um, I had a hand in developing. So did she. Uh, our biggest uh, developments in that case were I developed Carrie, and she developed the original Annie, not the Annie that's in the novel, because I can't ever hope to completely grasp uh, the the young girl that she created for this role play. I've done my best. And um, but yeah, she's the original Annie. And we had great fun with it. And I would play a lot of the a lot of the characters, uh, a lot of the NPCs as we'd call it when we type back and forth. In fact, I was, I was Helena, I was Erwin. Um, she was pretty good at playing Coraline. Uh, she was much better at playing Coraline than me. Um, so, Deanna, I mean, we played her too. Uh, we traded those off. I, I generally was Helena and uh, Erwin, which when you read the novel, you can understand why I get into their character so much. And it was during that play, during that playing, as we went through that summer uh, of 2011, uh, working on all of this and developing it, that I started getting, I guess you could say I was getting pulled into the fact of how well I was identifying with the characters which were almost all female. I mean, you know, a lot of the characters that were developed in this role play ended up in the novel. And as you've noticed, <laughs> there's a, a huge preponderance of uh, female characters. And I would get e immersed in playing them to the point where I was really enjoying uh, playing them greatly. Um, and there were a couple of things that came up in some of our role plays that uh, Tanya kind of took notice to. Um, nothing was really just outwardly said, but there would be things that I would say or do in, char in those characters that she would kind of like, mm-hmm, okay, why, why did you do that? <laughs> and um, I was say, you know, well, I'm really getting into the character. What I was really doing was living through these female characters because one of the things that was happening in this role play, in this world that we were creating, is I was beginning to feel things again. I was beginning to come out. And there had been a time back in the late 1990s and the early 2000s where when I wrote, I was actually putting myself into these female characters. A lot of transgender uh, people, especially, um, well, all of them, not just male to female, but female to male as well, uh, if they write they're actually writing characters based upon who they want to be, who they feel they could be. And I have always been comfortable writing a lot of female characters, and that's one of the reasons. It's because it, it was more than just fantasy to me. You know, it's not just, oh, you know, these are great ass-kicking characters. It was, this is who I want 
to be. That's one of the reasons why I, I relate so well, I think, to Erwin, is she is, her life is sort of the female version of what um, Carrie has went through as well. And Carrie has gone through a lot of the stuff that I've gone through. So around the end of August of 2011, I started getting honest with myself about what I was putting into these characters and how it was making me feel. And it was starting to bring up a lot of that old um, gender gender urges, you might say, um, of remembering that at one time, you know, I would have felt I would have been far more happier as a woman. And that I used to write all the time uh, about women because it was my fantasy outlet. It was the same thing when I used to run role-playing games in the 1990s and I'd play all these female characters. When I GM'd, I had a huge number of female characters that my players would encounter and they always kind of wondered why there were so many women uh, in these games that I played. <coughs> and <laughs> now some of them know why. And I actually just came to the conclusion that the, the thing to do was to come clean. Um, I had developed such a great relationship with Tanya over a year, uh, the period of a year from the writing course to August of 2011, that I almost felt like it was unfair to hide something from her. Even though I was hiding things from my family, um, and I was doing that for good reason because basically I had come out kind of um, once to my sister and once to my first wife and both times those events were eventually held against me and used against me and so even trying to think about bringing this up to my my family at that time it was just I couldn't do it But I felt I needed to tell my friend Tanya that, you know, this is what's going on in my life. This is what's going on in my head right now. So I remember it was, it was like the last week. I think it was a Tuesday, the last Tuesday of August 2011. And I had decided that day when I saw her online, I was going to tell her, by the way, I have this thing I need to discuss with you and I was scared you know I was this was my coming out moment it really was this was my this was my coming out moment I hadn't decided I was going to transition but I needed to tell somebody and this was it and it, it was the most frightening moment in my life up to that point because I didn't know if I could do it and um, I really did think, I actually approached that day with the belief that I was going to say this and that was going to be it, you know, <laughs> friendship over. You know. But I felt it was something I needed to do. So that afternoon when she came online, I spent um, a few minutes explaining myself. And I basically told her, um, you know, I don't know how else to put this, but uh, one of the reasons why I like playing so many female characters, one of the reasons why I seem to be very comfortable playing in female guys is that I feel I'd be more comfortable if I were a woman. And I remember there wasn't a long pause or anything. She was just sort of like, oh, really? 
you know. <laughs> and after that, it was just like, okay. And there wasn't a lot of discussion or anything on the matter. It was just, you know, okay, I understand. And that was it. And that was really it. That was my coming out moment. And the thing of it is, once you come out like that, it's the proverbial uncorking of the genie's bottle. You, you don't put the genie back in the bottle until you're done getting all your wishes. So that moment kind of snowballed from that point on. And uh, once I knew I could come out to someone, then I knew I was being honest with myself. And I knew that, um, you know, this was probably the route I was going to go. So later in that year, uh, in December as a matter of fact, I, I got a job. Um, I was given an offer to work as a programmer for the state of Indiana. And in January of 2012, I went to work for the state of Indiana. And I'm still thinking about all this stuff that's going on. Uh, having come out, I couldn't put it behind me. And um, I realized I needed to do something about my gender identity. And it just so happened that uh, a person I knew online who was a retired psychologist, uh, she said, you need to find a, a gender therapist, see if there's one in your area. And there just happened to be one uh, who worked on the west side of Indianapolis. So I scheduled an appointment with her and went in and saw her. And I remember um, before going to the meeting, I, I told Tanya, I said, you know, tomorrow is my big day. I'm going off to see my therapist. And I was living alone in Indianapolis at the time. And when I got back, she was online. And I said, well, I just got back. And um, Tanya said, so what, so what did she say? And uh, I said, well, my therapist said flat out at the end of the therapy session that uh, I have gender identity disorder and I'm definitely you know uh, suited to transition and I remember the comment that came back this was in the middle of May of 2012 and the comment that came back was I've known that all along <laughs> but really it was in that period between August of 2011 and May of 2012 that got me to where I'm at today. And it was that moment in August of 2011, uh, a moment that I actually spent about a week agonizing over before I came out, that pushed me in the direction of saying, this is what I need to do with my life. And to be honest, if I hadn't been received with the understanding and friendship that I was, I don't know what would have happened. And that's the important thing for us who are going through this sort of thing, this change of life, is that we do have people that understand us, that we do have people that accept us. I wouldn't be here if it were not for my friend Tanya. And I've said that many times before. And she knows it. She knows the part she played 
in making Cassidy. And I'll never forget her for that. So there you have it. There it is. That's the event. And I damn sure couldn't have written it as good as this. I hope you enjoyed that. Take care. I'll talk to you later.